Hi, this is Todd with The Land of Math. Nothing kills a person's grade faster than getting a zero on an assignment. In this video, we're going to look at the impact the zero has on your grade and how much you have to do just to get your grade back up to where you need it to be. All that's coming up next on The Land of Math. The zero percent. Nothing is more devastating to a person's grade than getting a zero percent. Now there's this assumption that if you get an A on a quiz or a test, and then the next one you got an F, if you average those two grades together, we should end up with like a C. And the answer on that is like, well, maybe, but maybe not. So here are a couple of examples. So let's say we got 100%, which was our A, and let's say our F was 0%. Okay, so pretty low F there. So if we average those two together, our actual score is a 50%, which is an F. So we wouldn't get a C. On the flip side, let's say we got 100% again for our A. So that would be a pretty good score. So we got about as high as we could possibly get. So we got 100%. And let's say our F this time was a little bit better. Let's say we got a 50%. It's still an F, but it's a 50%. It's a little bit higher than a zero. When we average those two scores together, we end up with a 75%. In that case, we would end up with a C. All right, so here's an example of a situation where we got 0% on our first grade, and then from the rest of the time, we kept getting 100%. How much work would it take to get us back up to an A? And you can see here the first example, if we got a 0%, we'd be on an F at 0%. When we get our first 100%, we're now still at an F, but at least it's up to a 50. Our second 100% would get us up to a D, and you can see as we keep gathering 100% here, which again is a pretty hard score to get, but we're going, doing this every single time, it would take us a total of nine straight 100% just to get back to an A-. minus. That's nine times we have to get a 100% in a row, which is pretty good. Now, let's be a little bit more realistic. Let's say we average a 95%, which is still really good in a really solid A. So again, we start out with a 0% on our first score, so we'd be at a 0% or an F. And you can see here as we start to get 95%, our grade slowly starts to creep up and it's going to keep going. There's going to be a lot of work here to try to get this up. So as you can see, keep seeing, we keep adding 95%. The score slowly keeps going, keeps going. Eventually we get back to a 90%. So if you look at all these 95, 95% we'd have to get, we would have to get a total of 17 of them in a row. 17 straight A's, all of them 95%, it's not even A minus, all 95%. Now, on the flip side, what if we're getting 100% and our first score was a 50% instead of 100? So here's the paper we had earlier that showed us getting um, a 0% on our first score and how it took us nine 100s just to get it back. If our first grade had been an F but a 50%, you can see there's a lot less work. Matter of fact, after our first score of 100%, we're already up to a C. So you can see that right there. And then as we continue to add 100%, by the second 100%, we're up to a B and so on. So we only actually need four 100% to get back up to an A, which is five less if we got a zero on the first one. So it's a lot less work. It's quicker and easier to get your grade back up to an A that way. All right, let's look at our example where it is 0% on our first quiz or first grade. And we followed it up with a bunch of 95%, which are still very, very good grades, mid-level A's. We would need 17, 95%, 17 in a row, just to offset that one F, which happened to be a 0%. But what if our first grade wasn't a 0%? What if we actually had a 50%, still an F? Let's look at how it stacks up. And you can see it's not that bad. I mean, it's still a lot of work to do, but after 195%, we're already up to a C, and after 295%, we're back up to a B. To get it to an A, though, we would need eight straight 95%, but that's nine less than the 17 we would need if we had a 0%. And if our goal is just to get a B, we'd only need two to get up to that B compared to six, so it's four less 95% just to get back up to a B. So it's a lot less work comparing the getting a 50% the first time compared to a 0%. So in summary, the bottom line is 
Fs are never good, but all Fs are not equal, and you need to avoid zeros at all cost. Well, thanks for watching. We would love it if, if you subscribe to the channel, and we'd love a thumbs up. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time on The Land of Math.